Hello, welcome to Skill English. Today's lesson is about one word substitution. This one word substitution is a very integral part of any vocabulary development. If you are getting ready for any competitive exam which is knocking at your door or it's just a few months left, I think this session will be or this video lesson will be a very helpful to you. Also those who are interested in improving their vocabulary, I think this session of one word substitution will be really beneficial for you. So please remember, don't skip this video. Please watch the entire video from the beginning to the end. I'm sure you will get some good results and which will help you to crack the exam which you are going to give. So once again, I request you not to skip the video. If you don't have time now, take a break, come back and then watch the entire video which will be really helpful to you. So let's get started and see what are the list of one word substitution today I have come with to discuss with you all. So the number one, a person who is in 60s is called what? We see some choices here, sexagenarian, octogenarian, septagenarian and nonagenarian. Sexagenarian is the right choice. A person who is between 60 to 69 years old is called a sexagenarian. So the first choice is the right choice. So you got the answer now. There are person who is in 60s is called sexagenarian. But let's have a look at the other three words which are given here. So if this comes in your exam, you will be able to solve it. We see the next word called octogenarian. Octogenarian means a person who is between 80 to 89 years old. Remember, it is not 90. It is 80 to 89 years old is called an octogenarian. Next, septagenarian. Septagenarian means someone who is between 70 to 79 years old. It's called septagenarian. Nonagenarian means someone who is between 90 to 99 years old. is called a nonagenarian. So, sexagenarian, octogenarian, septagenarian and nonagenarian. These are all words which are very important. You, have, you can use these words to describe or give information about someone about what age group they fall in whether they are between 60 to 69 70 to 79 80 to 89 or what so i think this is wonderful you can describe something very easily by using only one word that a person who is in 60s is called sexagenarian so let's move on to the next question. The practice of marrying more than one wife at a time. The practice of marrying more than one wife at a time. We see polygamy, polyandry, monogamy and bigamy. What is polygamy? Polygamy means practice of marrying more than one wife at a time. So the first choice is the right choice. The practice of marrying more than one wife at a time. It is polygamy. And practice of marrying more than one husband at a time. That is called polyandry. More than one husband, remember. Next is monogamy. Monogamy means practice of marrying only one at a time. That is one wife or one husband. Bigamy means... Practice of having two wives or two husbands at a time. So, so bigamy means two. Practice of ha having two wives or two husbands at a time. So let's move on to the third one. A written declaration made on oath in the presence of a magistrate. I think this is a very common thing which you have often heard today, here today. That is affidavit. Affidavit is the right choice. 
a written declaration made on oath in the presence of a magistrate that is called affidavit so let's look at the other words i think document is very common and simple word we all know document is a uh, written or a printed matter that gives information or evidence about something that is called document voucher means a piece of document that uh, entitle the holder uh, to claim something uh, it may be discount it may be exchange of good it may be you know getting the rights of the good holding of the goods that is called voucher but what is dossier dossier is another very important word which you will come across if you have the habit of reading newspaper or reading news dossier means a collection of documents or information about a particular person which is handed over to a government or an agency it may be handed over to a foreign government also so that some action can be taken about a particular person a dossier that is called a dossier a series of event a collection of events a collection of uh, information which is handed over to a person to so that action can be taken so let's move on to the next one what is that medicine given to fight against poison someone has been affected by some poison or something something is bitten and the poison is spreading so something should be given you know like to counter that poison which is already spreading that is called antidote antidote means a uh, count something which will counter the poison that is anti it's work against the poison anti antidote so the antidote is the right choice medicine given to uh, to fight against poison but what about antibiotic antiseptic and antifungal antibiotic means a medicine that destroys the growth of microorganism in our body we will often hear that you know when a child falls sick you know are taken to a doctor the doctor prescribes some antibiotic so that you know it destroys the growth of microorganism in the body of the affected person the next is antiseptic antiseptic means something you know some area is infected you have to disinfect that or sterilize there so you have you are antiseptic using an antiseptic cream or and to so that you know it disinfects something so antiseptic is something which uh, we can say is used or a thing which is used to disinfect something or sterilize something the last choice is antifungal antifungal is something which is used to prevent fungal growth like ringworm which can be treated by an antifungal cream we see most of the time nowadays there are a lot of people who suffer from skin infection there is a fungi which is getting affected so antifungal is something which will help reduce the fungal growth we see a lot of antifungal cream nowadays available in the market which one can use to uh, reduce the growth of the fungal growth so now let's move on to the next question a person not likely to be easily pleased a person who is very difficult to please is very meticulous very careful very you know very minute about uh, details so here we see some choices one is fastidious infallible fatalist communist sometimes you have to also use sense of judgment to remove one from the choice i think here the first word which we can remove from the choice is communist because communist does not fall into this category communist means a person who believe in the principles of communism so communist is not a choice here so we see one is fastidious one is infallible and one is fatalist so 
fastidious means someone who is very much concerned about accuracy and skill. So, if someone is so much concerned about accuracy and detail, you know, it is very difficult to please that person. So, that type of person is called a fastidious person. It is very difficult to please that type of person. So, a person not likely to be easily pleased is called fastidious. But another two words which are not the choice of this given question but very important is infallible and fatalist. Infallible means, you know, flawless, faultless, error-free, incapable of making any mistake. So, someone who is infallible is someone who is so accurate that he doesn't make any mistake, he's flawless, he's faultless, he's error free every time. He's the perfectionist, you can say. So the next choice is fatalist. Fatalist means someone who feels that no matter what he or she does, the outcome will be the same. He thinks, you know, like, how much effort I put, you know, the result will be, you know, something already pre-gone. You know, the effort which he puts will not affect the ultimate result. He is called fatalist. He, say, he thinks that, you know, whether I do or not, nothing will hamper. The ultimate result is the same. So, fatalist is someone who feels that no matter what he or she does, the outcome will be same. So, let's move on to the next question. One who hates marriage, one who does not believe in the institution of marriage. We see some choice here, misanthrope, misogamist, misogynist and polygamist. So, one who hates marriage, let us see what is the right choice here. The right choice here is misogamist. Misogamist means a person who is a hater of marriage, who does not believe in the institution of marriage at all. He does not think that it works. He is a misogamist. He does not like marriage. So, the right choice here is misogamist. But let us look at the other three words which are also very important. Misanthrope means someone who does not like mankind, who is a hater of mankind, is misanthrope. And Misogynist is someone who is a hater of women. He doesn't like any women in the society. Always has a prejudiced mind against any, any particular lady, any particular female person. Oh, no, it, she is not good. It's a prejudiced mind. Always a hater of women. This misogynist. The last word, polygamist. Polygamist means a person who has, you know, this choice is totally different, it does not fit into here. Polygam polygamist means a person who has more than one wife or husband at the same time. This is totally out of context in this situation. But still you have to know this. So, let us move on to the next one. To free anything from germs. To free anything from germs. We see some choices here that is antiseptic, sterilize, antivirus and cauterize. What is anti, the right choice here? The right choice obviously here is sterilize. That is making free from bacteria which is giving rise to germs here. So, you have to sterilize that area. To free anything from germs, what you have to do is to sterilize. We see some other words here, antiseptic, you know, I have already told before uh, in this uh, lesson, antiseptic means, you know, preventing the growth of a disease causing microorganisms. That means you have to disinfect, that is called antiseptic means actually disinfect. Antivirus, you, those who are using computer or anything, they will know about this antivirus because this is a software, you know, designed to detect and destroy. Computer virus, that is called antivirus. Cauterize means, you know, means the process to burn the skin or flesh with a heated instrument to prevent infection. 
Cauterize means to burn the skin or flesh with a heated instrument to prevent the growth of infection, to reduce it, to kill that infection there only. That is called cauterize. So let's move on to the next one. We see here a speech made without any preparation. What is that called? A speech made without any preparation. That is called extempore. The second choice is the right choice, extempore. A speech made without any preparation is called extempore. So now you know the answer. A speech made without any preparation is called extempore. Before we move on to the next question, let's see what the other words mean here. Verbose means using more words than needed. You don't need so many words to explain a particular event or a particular thing, but you are using those words. You are exaggerating it. So, verbose means using more words than needed. We see another word called amateur. Amateur means a person who is not professional, who is very, you know, very plain, simple, he is not thinking professionally, his work is not up to the mark, he is still amateur, he is, he is still in the learning process, he is not a professional. The last choice we see verbatim. Verbatim is exactly the same words as which were used originally. A person has used some words to describe a particular thing. And someone is also using that exactly the same words that were used originally, word by word, letter by letter. That is called verbatim. So, here in this sentence, though you come to know all the words, I think the right answer you will know. A speech made without any preparation is called verb, uh, extempore. So, let us move on to the next question. A person having the ability to speak fluently and coherently. The person has the ability to speak fluently and coherently. Very clarity is there what he is trying to say. He is not only talking fluently, he is not only speaking fluently, but he is also having a clarity on what he is trying to say. So, we see here some choices here. Enthusiastic, confident, emotional, articulate. Obviously, the, the right choice is articulate. A person who can articulate better will be accepted because he is able to communicate fluently and coherently. That is the need of the hour today. So, here the right choice is articulate. Other choices here is very simple. Enthusiastic means someone who is very eager, keen to do something. I am very enthusiastic today in explaining these lessons to you all on bringing these beautiful lessons of one word substitution. I am very enthusiastic today. Confident means sure, I am sure what I am doing. I know at the back of the mind what I am going to achieve. I am confident of getting good marks in the examination. The other choice is emotional. That is something related to mind, emotion, feelings, psychological. Sometimes we often hear people saying, don't get so emotional, you know, like, that means something that person is affected by his feelings. I am trying to say to him that don't be emotional. So, though the right choice here is articulate a person having the ability to speak fluently and coherently, other words are also very important. If you can know how to use them, you will be in a much better position to speak fluently with others. Next one. 
a person who pretends to be what he is not a person who pretends to be what he is not we see some choices here imbiber imitator impresario imposter the right choice here is imposter imposter means someone who pretends to be someone but actually is not a person comes to you and introduces himself as a manager of a company or someone and he promises you that he will give you job in return he is asking some favor from you money or something you know but actually is not that is not the right person there someone who comes and tells that i am from a income tax department i i want to see your file but exactly is not from the income tax department so a person who pretends to be what he is not is called an imposter so the right choice here is imposter so now let's look Though now as we know the answer let's let's look about what the other three words mean imitator this is another very simple one you know someone who tries or who copies the behavior or action of others is called an Im imitator but what is imbiber imbiber means you know to consume liquid by drinking imbiber means to consume what liquid type of things by drinking another choice is impressario that means a person this means a person who organizes you know functions like concerts plays and all those things a person who organizes and who often finances functions like concerts plays etc so he is called an impresario next choice that through which light cannot pass light cannot pass through it what are the choices here one is opaque one is opulent one is transcoolant one is transparent that through which light cannot pass what is it what is the right answer make a guess no the right answer here what i mean to say is opaque opaque objects means that through which light cannot pass that is called opaque so the right answer is opaque that through which light cannot pass just the opposite of it is transparent transparent means you can see everything you know light can pass very easily you can see the other side because the light is passing through it very easily that is called transparent transparent objects you have often come to here next is transcoolant transcoolant means something which is semi transparent you can see partly is transcoolant the another word which we see here opulent opulent is totally here out of context here opulent is word here is means luxurious lavish it means like sumptuous so the right choice here in this sentence is opaque opaque objects means that through which light cannot pass so let's move on to the next one one who is present everywhere one who is present everywhere everywhere is present who can be just think god is present everywhere god is omnipresent so one who is present everywhere is omnipresent so the right answer here is omnipresent what is omnipotent omnipotent means all powerful very powerful 
all in all i can say god is omnipotent also omniscient means a person who knows everything is omniscient so though the right choice here is omnipresent it is very important to know what is omnipotent what is omniscient omniscient means no who is person who is knowing everything omniverse this is little bit different word this this is not directly related to the other three words omniverse means feeding on both plants and animal that is called omniverse so let's move on to the next one what is that a reserve for animals and birds acting as a natural habitat a place a secure place you can say a reserve particularly for the animals and birds and giving them a natural habitat that it is like their home so the right choice here is sanctuary a reserve for animals and birds acting as a natural habitat is sanctuary let's look at now the other three word i think zoo zoo is something which you all know it's an establishment or a place which has a collection of wild animals you know for display to the public during the weekends you know like children like to visit the zoo and and see the monkeys giraffes elephants especially the monkeys who creates a lot of faces so zoo is an establishment or a place which has a collection of wild animals you know mainly for the purpose of displaying to the public that is zoo so what is the other word aviary what is this word aviary means aviary means a large cage in which birds are kept a large cage type in which birds are kept that is called aviary the last one the last word that is called apiary apiary means a place where bees are kept so something related to bees is come to know that it is apiary something related to birds is called apiary and zoo i told you before also it is an establishment where a lot of wild animals and other birds and other animals are there which mean the main objective is to display to the public and sanctuary is the right choice it is a reserve for animals and birds acting as a natural habitat so let's move on to the next question one who tries to do good to mankind is a is a lover of mankind he loves mankind he loves to help one who tries to do good to mankind the first choice philanthropist this is the right choice philanthropist means lover of mankind so one who tries to do good to mankind is a philanthropist but the other two three words here are also very important which i think we should discuss here samaritan samaritan means a charitable or a helpful person who is always also ready to help others just like more or less like a philanthropist samaritan samaritan means a charitable or a helpful person the next word is altruist altruist means a person who cares and helps others despite knowing that he will not gain anything from it he is altruist he knows that he will not gain anything from him but still he carries on with the work and helps others so he is altruist he is called an altruist the last choice is beneficiary beneficiary means a person who derives advantage from something something is done and he gets some benefit out of it he is a beneficiary of that project or that scheme the next 
the practice of submitting a proposal to voting to the general public the practice of submitting a proposal it is a one point issue maybe to voting to the general public like do you think the country should have a woman prime minister uh voting take place the whole country one word yes or no so that is called a referendum it is a one point issue which is given to the public to know what their opinion is about a particular subject so that is called referendum the other words are very easy and simple but still i will discuss it election is a process where the people go and vote to select a particular candidate the process of selecting someone through voting process is called election popularity means someone who is very popular around very known famous the state of being liked admired by others popularity the popularity of the politician in our area has been rising by leaps and bounds the word reference i think is very easy you will use it you know it's like an act of mentioning to something or referring to something back act of mentioning something to explain something but remember the right choice here in this question is referendum that is the practice of submitting a proposal to voting to the general public that is called referendum so let's move on to the next one one who believes in god most of us believe in god you know do you believe in god if you believe in god or if you believe in the existence of god what you are called you are called theist one who believes in god is called a theist one who believes in god is called theist what is an atheist then atheist means someone who does not believe in god so it's just the antonym of theist what is agnostic a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence of god is agnostic a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence of god he is called an agnostic who is an apostate apostate means someone a person who renounce give up a religious or a political belief or principle a particular belief a particular faith as someone has given up renounce no i don't follow this now i don't believe is an apostate so remember in this sentence one word substitution the right choice here is theist one who believes in god so let's move on to the next one a person whose wife is dead is very simple it's called a widower a person whose wife is dead is a widower just the opposite a person whose husband is dead is called a widow remember it's just the opposite of widower right choice here is widower a person whose wife is dead orphan orphan means someone who has lost both his parents no one is there to look after him so we find a lot of orphanage home in our country helping out those childs or children 
The last word which we see here is patriot. Patriot means someone who has excessive love, ready to give everything for one's own country. He's called a patriot. Loves his country so much. Willing to give his life for the country. Patriot. We can hear a lot of patriotic songs also. They are very nice. It brings a feeling of something for our country. So we should all be patriotic. So in this sentence, the right choice, a person whose wife is dead is a widower. So let's move on to the next one. A person going out of a country to settle abroad. A person going out of a country to settle abroad in a foreign country is called an emigrant. So a person going out of a country to settle abroad is called an emigrant. So the right choice here is emigrant. What is immigrant? The, immediately the next choice is just an antonym. This is a person who comes to live permanently in a foreign country. Who comes in to our country maybe. From say New Zealand, Australia, anywhere. Any part of the world comes to India as a is an immigrant. A person who comes to live permanently in a foreign country. So, the opposite of emigrant is immigrant. Then, who is a refugee? Refugee means a person who has been forced to live in exile in order to escape war. Refugee means a person who has been forced to live in exile. Leaving their own country in order to escape war. The last choice is exiled. That means someone who is expelled and barred from one's own country. One's own country is barred. He is not allowed to stay. He is not allowed to come in his own country. He is exiled. So remember all these words are very important. Though we first looking at the right answer, but still we have to go through the other words also so that we can know each and every meaning of the given words. Let's move on to the next one. A person who loves his country. Just now I think I have discussed it. A person who loves his country very much is a patriot. You, I, we are all patriot. We love our country. A person who loves his country very much is called a patriot. So let's look at the other three words. What does that exactly they mean? What do they exactly mean? Traitor. Traitor means someone who betrays. Just the opposite of patriot. He backstabs you. You believe him. But he's, he turns out to be a traitor. You don't imagine in your life also that he will behave like that one day. So, someone who is a traitor is someone who backsteps someone to take an advantage. The next word we see, martyr. Martyr means someone who has given his life for the country. Our soldiers, they are martyrs. They have given their life. They have given everything in their life for this country. They are martyr. The last choice is popular. It's very famous, liked, admired by all. It's called popular. So patriot, someone who loves his country. Traitor is someone who backstabs you. You believe him, but still he ditches you. Martyr is someone who 
who loves his country and sacrifices his life for the country is called a martyr. Popular means a very simple word who is liked, admired by all. Next. Government by the people. I think we have heard this many, many times before also. Government by the people, for the people, of the people. This is called democracy. Democracy means government by the people, for the people, by the people, of the people. So obviously democracy here is the right choice. But we see some other words here also. Bureaucracy, autocracy, dictatorship. Bureaucracy means the bureaucrats, the decision taken by the bureaucrats, the officials, the state officials. So bureaucracy means a system of government where decision is taken by state officials rather than the elected representatives. So bureaucracy means a system of government where decision is taken by the state officials rather than the elected representatives. They are called, this is a system of government called bureaucracy. What is autocracy? Autocracy means one person rule, absolute power. He tells what to do and what not to do. He is an autocrat. Dictatorship is also like a one person rule. It is more or less like an autocracy rule. Dictatorship, most of the time we find many countries who have dictatorship. That means the army is ruling one person. Dictator. He is dictating everything. So, dictator means someone who is very powerful, who is all in all, who tells what to do and what not to do. He decides what the important functions here. There is no parliament here. There is no democracy here. So, dictatorship is also there in some countries. But remember the choice here, government by the people is democracy. So let's move on to the next one. Life story of a person written by himself. Life story of a person written by himself. Very easy. We all know this. It is called autobiography. Autobiography. Life story of a person written by himself. So the right choice is autobiography. So, what about biography? Biography means life history written by someone else. Written by someone about someone, other person. Not that person has written about it. So, it is a biography. We see another word called anarchy here. Anarchy means a state of disorder, lawlessness, confusion. Anarchy prevailed in the city when... The violence started. That is called anarchy. Total confusion. Disorder. No law and order is there. That is called anarchy. The last choice we see is monopoly. Monopoly means excessive possession or control of a supply or trade in a community. In monopoly business, we often find that there is no competitor of him. He is doing monopoly business. That is all in all. What he is selling, no other person sells in the area. Monopoly means exclusive possessions or control, the supply relation to trade or business. So remember here the choice, right choice is life story of a person written by himself is autobiography. So let's move on to the next one. That which cannot be heard. Someone is saying something. I cannot hear something. What he is saying actually? His voice is inaudible. I am not able to hear what he is trying to say. It is inaudible. So the right choice here is inaudible. Let's see what the other words. Invisible. 
just the opposite of visible you cannot see invisible oh my god where he is he has become invisible in front of us is he a ghost or not i can't see someone not see something it's invisible the next word is indispensable something which you cannot do away with it is it's a very important it's integral part of something like today if you want to be successful in life if you want to be uh, uh, crack uh, any interview i think today english is indispensable power of vocabulary one word substitution knowledge today is indispensable for any vocabulary development i think today so indispensable means something which you cannot do away with you need it it is very important in your life the last choice is illegible 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 means it's not clear it is not readable what someone has written i cannot get what is written after going through it his handwriting is illegible i cannot give the student mark here because his handwriting is not good up to the mark it is illegible so the right choice here that which cannot be heard is inaudible let's move on to the next question a word which is no longer in use it is outdated no one use this the first choice obsolete is the right choice obsolete means something which is no longer in use so let's move on to the next three words which are given these are also very important one is illicit illicit liquor we will see you know government is trying to take action against those who are selling illicit liquors illicit activities forbidden by law rules or custom something which is forbidden by law rules or custom that is called illicit not according to law that means it is illegal symmetry symmetry means a large burial ground means a large burial ground is a symmetry mercenary who is a mercenary mercenary is a person who takes money to do any act it may be killing also most of the time it is killing only and he doesn't have any ethics you give him money he will do something for you no ethic he has no ethics mercenary means someone who is leading a life killing people in return for money he is called a mercenary so before we move on to the next question please try to remember here the right choice is obsolete a word which is no longer in use is called obsolete so let's move on to the next one the killing of human beings we see some choices here homicide regicide suicide infanticide the killing of human beings homicide homicide means the killing of one person by another remember here something very important you have to remember it is accidental it is reckless negligent because of negligent someone negligence of someone another person died it was purely accidental or reckless you can say it was not intentional it was not deliberate it is not a murder so homicide is something which doesn't amount to murder the killing of one person by another which is purely accidental reckless or because of negligence this is the right choice the killing of human beings homicide so what is regicide regicide means a person who kills or takes part in killing of king killing of kings related to regicide suicide 
suicide means action of killing self which is purely intentional intentionally you are doing harm to yourself to kill yourself that is called suicide next we see the choice infanticide infanticide means killing of infants is called infanticide so the killing of human beings is homicide killing of the process or taking part in the process of killing of kings is called regicide suicide means action of killing oneself which is purely intentionally infanticide means a person who kills an infant killing of infant is called infanticide let's move on to the next one most probably the last one an assembly of listeners people who have gathered to listen to someone who is speaking you may be confused when you see the listener here also as a choice but the right choice here is audience group of people listening to someone who is speaking is called an audience not a listener the person who listen is a listener obviously but a group of person who is listening to someone who is speaking is called they are called audience spectators is related to watching a match in a stadium or something that is called spectators there were over 50000 spectators in the stadium observers this is also a very interesting word sometimes you know government send observer to see the overall process of say election they are observer they will notice how the process is going on and they will report it back to the government or the right officials observers so remember an assembly of listeners is called audience not listeners i hope today in this session i have been able to give you some inputs about some important words and i hope i have been able to make you understand how important this one word substitution is to improve your vocabulary to increase your word power if you want to appear for any competitive exam i hope you have enjoyed watching this session i have been able to give you something i am trying my best i hope i have been able to serve you better or i will be able to serve you better in the coming days and this session i was very eager to do this session with you all i hope i have been successful it if you have enjoyed watching this video please put your likes and share it with your friends those who are also preparing for any competitive exam or those who are interested in vocabulary development i hope i'm sure this will be of great help and those who are new to my channel those who are coming here for the first time please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get the information as and when i upload my next video so until then next time you know when we will meet again we will be going on with some interesting video lesson i hope you go on watching my channel and enjoy what we are doing in these sessions so today's session was all about one word substitution i have chosen some 25 words or 25 important things which i think will be helpful for you this is not the end surely obviously there will be some more others so let's say goodbye for the time being now and have a nice time go on watching my channel skill english until then next time thank you and goodbye